Well, thank you for coming here, everyone, and joining this session. Um, I hope you are having a wonderful time at this event. Um, so this particular session, we are going to talk about personalized digital experience, really making it personal um, for government applications and websites. How do we provide that personalized experience? So um, my name is Savita Faruqi. I'm CEO of SimSoft Solutions. And with me, I have Ajan Ross. Um, she is CIO of State Treasurer's Office, as well as Deputy Treasurer uh, of Technology and Innovation. Um, so we are going to talk uh, this particular topic in the context of a, a recent project we did for State Treasurer's Office, California Business Incentives Gateway. And we'll go into that a um, little bit more in detail. So how many of you use Netflix? Almost all of us, right? Um, so you're familiar with this screen. Uh, the recommendations that Netflix provides you, those are personalized for each one. Um, your screen is going to be di look different than mine. Um, I can tell you that mine will have a lot many cartoons on there. <laughs> um, same thing here, Amazon. That is another website that most of us use and are used to the personalized experience they provide. Amazon gives you recommendations based on your past uh, history, your purchase history, what you um, looked at in past, um, as well as who you are, what your preferences are, and so on. So in a way, these guys, these websites provide you personalized digital experience. How do they do that? It's really the four R's of personalization. They recognize who you are, they address you by your name, uh, remember your history, uh, let it be purchase history, or in case of Netflix, the history of what you watched, uh, where are you in a particular movie, what was the rating that you provided, and so on. Uh, recommend options based on that, and also provide relevant promotions to you. And all of this personalized experience is becoming more and more important, uh, both in commercial as well as in public sectors. Um, when a study was conducted, 88% of customers said that uh, they would like to work with or buy uh, from a retailer who does provide that personalized experience. And as a result, the businesses are forced to look at this aspect and 94% um, of companies are looking for higher engagement and provide that kind of experience. So yeah, all that is good for public, uh, private sector, but does it really matter for public sector? And uh, there is this perception that, yeah, public sector doesn't really need to care for it, but that's no longer true. It is the same customers who are using Netflix and Amazon. They are using public services too. And we have already, like these websites have already trained them to expect the same kind of experience from public services, public websites as well. Um, so as we serve the same people, there is also this uh, need for government to look at, they do have a brand. So what is the brand perception? How people view them? Whether they're satisfied with what they get? Uh, as well as delivering results. And if you provide services that increase customer satisfaction, that help us do more with less. So ultimately, our objectives in both sectors are the same. We want to do more with less, and we want to have happy customers. And build relationships with those customers. Predict their intent and provide what they need. And that's exactly what we did with California Business Incentives Gateway. And I'm going to invite Jan to talk more about um, this project, um, where it started. Okay, so thanks, Savita. Um, that is the springboard of what we did with CBIG. Um, I came from the controller's office with the John Chung administration. Several of us transferred from the controller's office to the treasurer's office in January 2015. And our world at the controller's office was relegated to pay and um, accounts and receivables for all the state departments and local governments. And we segued into the 
treasurer's office and there were 14 boards and commissions that offered a multitude of economic incentives. And the boards and commissions are called things like CAPFA and CPCFA and CFA and CHAFA and the list goes on and on. And we're like, where do we go in this alphabet soup? This is totally new to us. So then we started going through each of the boards and commissions and identifying all of the economic incentives they offer, like um, green businesses or relocating your business or if you're changing, you're a, a soda manufacturing company and you have a diesel fleet and you want to change it to a clean energy fleet. There are economic incentives that government has already authorized for all of these kinds of businesses. And unless you know either who issued the statute or to what government entity, and you can go out and find CPCFA and know that it stands for the California Pollution Control Facility Authority, it's unlikely you're going to easily get to the economic incentive that might actually serve you. Consequently, lots of incentives go untapped because people simply don't know how to find them. So when we arrived at the treasurer's office and we were confronted by this alphabet soup of of BCAs, boards, commissions, and authorities, the treasurer said, why can't it just be as simple as Amazon? Why can't it just be a marketplace of economic incentives? His chief of staff that um, Christmas 2014 had been doing Christmas shopping for his kids on behalf of other relatives. And he just put in his daughter's age, her interests, her activities, and Amazon offered up a multitude of gifts. And he said, this is what I want our website to look like. I don't want it to be a treasurer specific website. I want it to be a marketplace so that anybody who's doing business in California can just say, I need an economic incentive, or I'm building a business, or I want to have a green business. And the California Business Incentive Gateway pops up. And so we we began designing it and and strategizing how it would work, and we thought we really want to accelerate the time to deployment. The treasurer only has four years in office. We want to get this out there, and we took the philosophy of if we build it, they will come. We want it to be something that not only does it recognize that um, you have specific interests, but we wanted to offer a wish list of things. If I've been there five times and I never set up a user account, I don't necessarily want to have to drill through things again, but if I want to set up a user account and I want to create a cart, I want all that stuff right there. I want the experience I have with Amazon to happen with the government. I want to have that kind of personal connection. I want that website not to make me work so hard. So that's how we came up with this landing page site and the application behind it, which is called the California Business Incentive Gateway, or CBIG like C, S-E-E, -E, C big, just, you know, this big vision of how you would get there. So we want to make it easy to find incentives. And once you find that incentive, we want it to be there every time you return. So we want some intelligence about it. We want it to be an intuitive platform. And just like when you are um, creating that shopping experience on Amazon, if you find some things you like, it'll have like a little ticker tape across the bottom saying, customers who bought that also considered this. So we want this site to be intelligent enough to say, I'm, you're looking at these kind of incentives. And other people who looked at them also considered these incentives. So you don't have to go in there knowing everything. All you have to know is your business. Just like when you're shopping on Amazon, all you have to know is either who you're shopping for or what you're shopping for. Let that marketplace offer up everything else. So CBIG should do all of the work so that you as a user don't have to know what state government offers, what um, local governments offer, cities or counties. All you need to know is what you're looking for, and the marketplace should offer it up. So um, what we did was, uh, with, with assistance from um, SimSoft, who was a wonderful business partner in this, bringing lots of ideas, taking what we wanted, and, and elevating it to something we had not considered, um, we took the, uh, we took this approach of let's make it a marketplace, Let's have the system, what slide am I on? Okay, sorry. I'm on popular categories, is that what yeah. that says? Pardon me for 
for squinting and stretching. It's old age and best I can do. Um, but anyway, so we took these recommendations, we took these incentives, uh, we took popular categories, and we created this personalized experience so that a consumer going on the website, the application knows what location they're in. It will offer up incentives that are geographically relational to the area that the consumer is approaching. Or they can put in green business or any of the other kinds of things they want to do with their business. And then again, it'll offer up uh, recommendations based on analytics. It gathers analytics from everybody, not just from your personal experience, but the kinds of shopping, just like Amazon does, for people who are looking for specific things, why other things may be relevant. From there, we said, again, with this philosophy of if we build it, they will come, we want government partners to come. In the same way that Amazon wouldn't provide value if only three vendors subscribed to it and put their products out there, we want all governments to come that have incentives in California. So we've opened it up to cities, to counties, to special districts, even federal incentives. If there are federal incentives that are specific to California businesses, we want to host them in our marketplace. Again, because the real value, what the relationship is that we're trying to create is this, make it easy for the customer, make it easy for the consumer who's coming to the site. They don't need to know which level of government is offering this, and they shouldn't be burdened with going all over to shop and find this. We just want to offer it. Once those incentives are there, then that consumer actually has a relationship with that provider who's offering that incentive. Uh, the way we set this up, these government partners, they register themselves. They put their own content out there. Very low overhead on the STO. We've provided the marketplace. Those local governments or federal government or whoever else, other state departments, all state departments, they own their own content. They are just a government partner on the marketplace. So they refresh their own content. They establish who they are. They put their contact information in there. They put their website. They put all of the details about the variety of economic incentives that they offer. And it's self-sustaining at their pace, at their rate. So it's this. It's this real relationship. How do we build on it? How do we make it of greater value to the consumer who's coming to participate there? And so far, we launched late in December 2016. That was our initial maiden launch with this website. And we did some basic emailing outreach to um, the state of California, all the state departments. Um, to counties and cities and the League of Cities and CSAC and we said here's our marketplace here's our idea and it was not the first time that we engaged them actually all the way back and I think Savita will talk about this a little bit but we engaged the California Business Roundtable the um, California State Association of Counties the League of Cities from the very beginning, back at the drawing board, and Savita will take you through this on, this is our idea, and this is the marketplace we want, and we think that we could have buy-in from everybody, but what would make sense to the California Business Roundtable? We want your input. What would make sense to small businesses in California? We want your input. So we had all of these stakeholders. We created this site. We launched it in December. So in the two months since the end of December, we so far have 37 government partners that have registered on the site, and we have 111 incentives registered on the site. And we're continuing to do outreach and um, solicitation of participation from these other government entities, and we hope to have 20% of the marketplace registered on there by summer 2017, and then, and then continuing to build. So with that, I'll hand it back to Savita. Thank you. Yeah, so how did we achieve this? Um, you know, user-centric design, we do hear that, and more and more there is this recognition that, okay, we need to focus on the customer and um, build the solutions for them. So to achieve that, we provided various services, starting with user research, UX design, the content strategy, and, of course, development and implementation. Um, so user research, like uh, Jan mentioned, we talked to various stakeholder groups. So in this particular 
um, uh, solution in this marketplace, there are two groups that primarily were important. Uh, one is consumers, another is providers, right? Um, so the providers being all the government partners and the consumers being the small businesses, um, the uh, representation from uh, small and large businesses such as the business round table and so on. So we uh, talked with many stakeholders from both sides um, through interview, through surveys, um, and from that information we did come up with the personas, the most likely people who are going to use the website, and also arrived at the customer journey mapping. So if this is the user group, how are they most likely going to use uh, the website? So from there, from that research, we created the sketches, the wireframes, as well as the final design. Uh, so keep in mind that for every step of the way, engaging users and getting their feedback was something that we had done. So from the sketches to wireframes to final design, um, that, that's what led to creating the uh, design. So that is looking at the users. The <coughs> other part is looking at the content. Um, ultimately, Amazon-like experiences can be created when you do have um, good content. I mean, you may create a marketplace, if, but if there is no good content, if you cannot present it in an easy to um, you know, access way, uh, it's not going to be successful. So content strategy is one of the key uh, element of successful solutions. So the content strategy involves, OK, what is the structure of what we are going to publish on the website? So in this particular case, incentives. The categories we talked about. How do we arrive at those categories? What makes sense? What ter terminology should we use? Uh, the labels, um, again, rather than using the jargons that, say, um, organizations are used to internally, what is that relates to the customer? So content strategy forces us to look at all of those aspects and ultimately match the right content to uh, right presentation. So. Um, a lot of work goes before we get ready to do actual development, but all of these things uh, we did, and then finally it came to, uh, okay, we do know what the users want, we know what the content is, how do we now map the two? So personalization is all about understanding user needs, understanding what content is there, and creating targeting rules so that we are delivering right information to right users. Um, so you see here on the left-hand side, we have explicit, implicit, and contextual ways by which we gather users' data. So what we mean by that? By explicit means that is when the users register with the website and provide their information willingly, or they log into the system through their social media accounts, such as LinkedIn or Facebook, and when they do that, they do collect, we, we can, the system can uh, pull the information, of course, with user's consent, pull the information from their public profile uh, data, let it be Facebook profile or LinkedIn profile, and that gives us information about, you know, such as name, age, uh, etc. And that information can help us determine what might be relevant to this user. The second way is, as the user navigates through the website, clicks on various, uh, say in case of Amazon, clicks on various products, um, or in case of Netflix, looks at various um, recommendation. Um, using that browsing history to make decisions about or understanding the user's intent, so that is the implicit way of collecting data. And then the contextual data collection, where is the user located? You know, uh, these days the browsers help us detect the location. Uh, what is the time of the day? Just as simple as that. And using that information is the contextual data collection. So uh, through these three means, we can know a lot about user and use that information to make it easy for them. Um, so in case of CBIG, again, as I said, there are users on one end, content on the other. When the user comes to the website, we can detect where is the user coming from? We know their location. So for example, they're coming from Riverside, 
in California. And uh, let us say that this user, as they navigate through the website, they look at uh, energy innovation grants or weatherization rebate, etc. As the user uh, goes through this, um, we do start making note of the fact that users are interested in this particular user is interested in energy related incentives or um, green incentives and so on. So as the user continues, there is uh, this rule that we have defined and these rules are configurable rules. So these can be changed if you think that the particular rule isn't working. So we have defined a rule that, okay, if the user is interested in these two, then we are going to promote the content which is energy efficiency incentives to them because um, we know that there is that interest. We also um, do surface the incentives which are local, so riverside incentives get higher preference than say statewide because it's very likely that um, the local incentives people do want access to. Um, and so with um, CBIG, it is helping the users to arrive at what they're looking for without having to know exact keywords. And that's where that Amazon-like experience um, comes in picture. We also allow users to go ahead and uh, save the incentives in their wish list. Um, so that allows them to come back uh, later and you know continue their exploration. So um, again, coming back, the four R's of personalization. Those are exactly what we have implemented within CB. Um, we do allow users to register with the site if they want to um, have a continuous experience when they go from one device to another. But even if they don't, we just implicitly understand their intent and provide them recommendation based on their browsing history. Uh, it is not necessarily purchase history in this case, but it is really the, uh, the viewing history. Uh, we do provide relevant promotions um, based on not only what this user looked at, but what others are looking at. So when you go to a particular incentive, the related incentives would be surfaced. Um, so while we are collecting all of this data, it's very, very critical that we, we use that in the right way, right? Of course, uh, especially with government, people are very skeptical that how are you going to use my data, right? is the big brother watching kind of a thing. Um, so there are three main things to keep in mind, is that we need to be transparent with what we are doing with data. What data are we collecting? How are we going to use that? Um, and then give control um, to the customer for their data. So for example, when in this particular uh, application, as the user navigates, we collect the data, we um, kind of understand that they're interested in this uh, particular area, but we also give control to the uh, user. The user can come back in, and if they don't want the system to remember their history, they can come in and reset all their um, collected behavior or preferences. So in a way, we are giving the control to the user, and finally, we are using that data, their data, to serve them better. So as long as we are very, very, um, we are pay paying attention to these three things, personalization um, has, is helping us to take the users from the mode of frustration to delight, but not being creepy about it. 